Why has the planet Mars captured our attention over the years? When did humans first become interested in the planet? What do we know about the planet? And why do we want to continue studying Mars? The astronomers at the Royal Observatory want to answer these questions today. And I'm Emily. I'll be talking about what the planet Mars is like and why humans are so fascinated with this particular planet in our solar system. I'm Greg, and I'll be talking about the many spacecraft that have studied Mars in the past. I'm Hannah, and I'll be talking about the future planned missions to Mars. Humans have known about Mars for millennia because it's one of the five planets that we can see in the night sky without the telescope. The planet Mars is named after the ancient Roman god of war, who was also called Mars. Now, while this planet has a violent name, it's actually a relatively peaceful planet because it's entirely inhabited by robots. Now that's right, the only life that we've found on the planet Mars includes the landers and rovers that we've been sending to the planet for about the past 50 years or so. Not much was known about Mars until telescopes were invented a few hundred years ago. Even in the 1700s, astronomers like Giovanni Cassini and Christian Huygens were able to study Mars's polar ice caps and observe how the ice caps seemed to change in size depending upon the season that was happening on Mars at the time. Now, Mars actually has seasons very similar to the Earth. But by the 1800s, astronomers like Giovanni Schiaparelli began to note that there seemed to be long, darker features streaking across the surface of the planet Mars. Schiaparelli described these long lines as the Italian word canali, which be can be translated into English as channels or canals. Now, this discovery actually caused a lot of controversy at the time because of the differences in these two translations. A channel is a natural feature on the surface of the planet, but a canal is engineered by life. So this led a handful of scientists at the time to hypothesize that there's intelligent life on the planet Mars and that they'd actually built canals that transported water from the poles to the rest of the planet. Now, this idea actually inspired many science fiction novels at the time about what the so-called Martians were doing on the planet and what they were like. Now, eventually, these canals on the surface of Mars were shown to be an optical illusion. And that was actually shown by astronomers at the Royal Observatory Greenwich in London. These two astronomers were called Annie Maunder and Edward Walter Maunder. Irregular features on the surface of Mars can look like straight lines because of how far away the planet is from the Earth. However, this changed the way humanity thought of Mars. And there was always this hope there that life could exist on a planet that's relatively close to us in our solar system. We didn't really know what Mars was like until we sent some of the first spacecraft to the planet in the 1960s. Mars is also known as the red planet because of its color. And scientists soon realized that the planet didn't get its color from its temperature. Mars is actually pretty cold compared to the Earth. And that's because it's further away from the sun than the Earth is. An average day on Mars is about minus 60 degrees Celsius, but that can vary depending upon what season that's going on on the planet at the time, um, and also where you are on the planet. So the poles of Mars are colder than the equator of Mars, for example. The reddish color on the planet um, actually comes from the surface of Mars, which is mainly made up of iron oxide, which is just another way of saying rust. Now, the planet also has some incredible features on its surface, everything from canyons to ice caps to craters and even extinct volcanoes. Actually, the highest mountain in the entire solar system can be found on Mars. It's called Olympus Mons, and it's actually three times higher than Mount Everest on the Earth. What astronomers didn't find on the surface of Mars were large bodies of water. Though there was some evidence that water existed on Mars in the past, the planet was revealed to be a cold desert that was seemingly devoid of all life. Humankind has had to change their opinion of this planet again. If life ever existed on Mars, then it was either in the past or it's currently much harder to find this life than what we thought. 
Let's take a look at a few of the past missions to the Red Planet. Getting to Mars is not easy. First you need a well-designed rocket capable of taking your payload above our atmosphere and then across the tens of millions of kilometres of empty space. You need to be able to protect your payload from the harsh environment it's going to be travelling in. Bright sunlight, extreme cold, radiation and more. And you can't go at any time you want. You can only go during a brief launch window, a few weeks that occurs every two and a bit years. Nonetheless, many missions have now attempted the voyage, beginning all the way back in the 1960s. Though a handful of attempts had been made before it, all of which had failed either to launch or to deploy properly, Mariner 4 was the first to reach Mars in a functioning state. It was designed as a simple flyby mission, intending to fly past the planet at high speed, taking images and scientific data as it went. But in the 1960s, computer technology was relatively young. When the scientists got their first image of Mars, they knew it would take several hours to be processed. Unwilling to wait that long, they went to a nearby craft store, bought a set of pastels, and set about painting the first close-up image of Mars, literally by numbers. Orbiters and landers made up most of the missions over the next few years, and success was rare or short-lived. The first successful lander, Mars 3 from the Soviet Union, lasted less than two minutes on the surface. 1975 brought the Viking missions, a pair of NASA orbiters with landers that successfully operated on the surface for several years. They produced panoramic views of the surface and were able to conduct experiments looking for signs of life without much success. NASA's Pathfinder mission in 1997 was the first to include a rover, Sojourner, enabling scientists to take their experiments beyond the initial landing site for the first time, even if it was only for about 100 metres. It paved the way for some of the most successful missions since then. These included Spirit and Opportunity, twin rovers that were expected to last 90 days each, and ended up lasting for six years and 16 years respectively. Opportunity even holds the record for the longest distance covered by an extraterrestrial vehicle at 45 kilometres or a little over a marathon. More recently, Curiosity, a rover the size of a car weighing in at almost a tonne, has spent the last eight years travelling within Gale Crater, a suspected ancient lake bed, and provided substantial evidence that ancient Mars was warm and wet, perhaps even suitable for life. As missions to Mars have gone on, success rates have improved. Launch failures are rare, and issues with deployment, such as those that affected the ill-fated ESA Beagle 2 mission, have become less common as well, even as the complexity of these missions have continued to increase. But key science questions surrounding Mars still remain. Was there ever life on Mars and is there still life on Mars today? NASA's Mars 2020 mission is a continuation of its Mars exploration program, which includes a rover, Perseverance, and a helicopter, Ingenuity. The program is designed to seek signs of life, with the new rover contributing by looking for habitability, seeking biosignatures, and caching samples. Perseverance is based on the very successful Curiosity rover, but with some improvements and new science capabilities. It's designed to last only one Martian year, but like its predecessor, it may well last for years to come. When the rover begins its descent towards Jezero Crater on the 18th of February 2021, new cameras will record the parachute opening and the complex sky crane landing process. Scientists will this time be able to see how the technology held up and if it all went to plan. The rover will also have improved wheels and two microphones. Microphones have previously been sent to Mars, but none have ended up being functional. NASA hopes to record the sounds during the landing, and if the microphones survive to the surface, we may even get to hear what a day on Mars sounds like. The rover is also equipped with a robotic arm with a drill, which will take samples of rock cores, analyse their composition and store them in tubes on the surface to be collected and returned to Earth in a future mission. Perseverance is also tasked with preparing for humans by trialling technology necessary for future human exploration, 
it will use an instrument called MOXIE to try and create oxygen from the planet's thin carbon dioxide atmosphere. But it isn't just NASA sending new missions to Mars. The Red Planet is getting robotic visitors from around the world in the next few years. 2022 sees the joint European Space Agency and Russia mission ExoMars launch its Rosalind Franklin rover. Although only a third of the size of Perseverance, this rover will carry a two-metre drill to take samples from below the Martian surface and search for signs of life. You may wonder why two seemingly similar rovers are heading to Mars to search for the same thing. But even though they're rovers, so they are designed to move, they don't travel very far. In Curiosity's seven and a half years, it has only driven 23 kilometres. If we're going to find microscopic life, we're going to need our rovers in different places to cover more area. The limited range of robotic exploration is argument for human missions to Mars. A person on the surface can quickly identify areas of interest and make split-second decisions. These human missions are being planned, though. As part of NASA's Moon to Mars program, after sending a crewed mission back to the Moon in 2024, NASA planned to send the first human missions to Mars as early as 2030. After one failed attempt at launching an orbiter, Japan will try for Mars again in 2022, sending the Mars terahertz microsatellite, with the goal of understanding the carbon dioxide resupply process of the Martian atmosphere. India 2 is sending another orbiter in 2024, but this may be upgraded to include a lander and even possibly a rover. Finally, Japan wants to go one step further and send a probe to take return samples from Mars's largest moon, Phobos and then do a flyby of its other moon, Deimos. Although we've been exploring Mars for over half a century, with so much new technology in future missions planned, I think we're just getting started.